Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Ball here, your favorite gun channel and beautiful bright Hanglish language. I have received several requests on several platforms about how I develop my loads for patch round ball shooting. I love that topic. I plan to make this as a part of the next Q&A video, but I decided that I'm going to separate it because it's such a big topic that has many related aspects. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a step-by-step -step guide for how to set your load for a patch round ball rifle or pistol. When we start shooting black powder guns, we usually start with a patch round ball, cap and ball rifle or pistol. And this is right like this because they are usually much cheaper than other guns. They are easy to operate, they are cheap to operate, that's also important. And they can be surprisingly accurate up to 100 and 150 meters. And uh, technically, they are a lot of joy to shoot, so they will follow you all your life. But before we go on, let me thank you for your support. It is vital for keeping the quality of the channel high. You can support us through Patreon. Here you will receive exclusive content, early access to content we make, and I will answer your questions more frequently, if I can, of course. So ladies and gentlemen, for further details, please visit our Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash capandmore. In the past decades, I won quite a few medals with flintlock rifles, patch rumble flintlock rifles, and the shiniest one is uh, World Championships bronze medal that I won in 2022 in Germany. It's an individual bronze medal. And probably these medals entitle me to talk about my experiences to you. I'm still learning. I will always learn this stuff. But anyway, probably these experiences are worth sharing with you because it will save you money and save you a lot of time. So we will walk through all the elements of the charge and also we are going to talk about the loading procedure itself. So the patch round ball is a very forgiving bullet, meaning it will work well with a wide range of twist rates. Usually we say that the slower twist rates or the middle twist rates are best for shooting patch round ball, meaning that one turn in 48 inches and one turn in 66 inches, 72 inches, these are the best for round ball shooting. But in fact, if you are buying a black powder percussion muzzle loading pistol in 45 caliber, most of them are made with one turn in 19 inch barrels and they are accurate, they work well. This all means that you can find the load for nearly all kinds of rifling that are existing in black powder era today. The one thing that you will have to take care of is the muzzle velocity. Because if your muzzle velocity is too high and your rifling twist is too fast, then your bullet will jump the rifling. Because the patch round ball does not have that kind of large bearing surface as a conical bullet. So start with deciding what's your purpose with your load. If you have a patch round ball rifle, then and you're a hunter, you will go for the largest possible charge. This is written in your user's manual, never exceed this, but use every joule of energy that is possible from your rifle. If you are looking for an accurate load, then start with the largest load, and step by step, let's say in two or three grains increments, start reducing it until you reach the desired group. Now this group can be a bit bigger than in the case of target shooting. So for example, if you have a group of 5 centimeters, let's say a group like this at 50 meters, that's more than perfect for hunting. For target shooting it's not enough, but for hunting that's more than enough. If the goal is target shooting, then go for the lightest load possible. A strong recoil, a hard load, it will tire your body, your nerves, which means that you are not going to be able to keep up the same kind of accuracy through the complete relay. So go for the lightest load. This is going to save you a lot of money, by the way, because on target shooting we shoot a lot, while on hunting we shoot maximum one or two shots per day, which is nothing. But on target shooting, well, that will save a lot of money for you. So let's go through step by step by all the components of the load. Let's start with the round ball itself. Your bullet has to be cast or pressed from pure lead. This is the best. A slightly alloyed lead, it can also be used, but if you pull a tight-fitting patch and bullet combo for you, from your bore and you check the surface of your round ball, you will see that the imprint of the patch is visible on the surface of the bullet. Now, this is what you're looking for because these imprints just show that you have a very, very tight and strong connection between the patching material and the bullet. The diameter of the bullet is very important. Now, your undersized lead ball has to be five to ten thousandths of an inch smaller then the land to land diameter of your bore. So this is actually your bore diameter. Now, it does not really matter if it's a, in a 45 caliber rifle or pistol, you're using a 440 or 445 ball because you can compensate it with the patch. This difference will not cause any kind of difference in accuracy. The next element of the charge is the patch itself. It must be made from natural, good quality material. There must not be any kind of plastic in it. To check this, just burn a bit and you will see the difference immediately. When you burn a linen patch, it will burn clear and convert to dust-like ashes. 
If it becomes sticky and burns with black thick smoke, it is plastic. Avoid it. But this one is right. The material of the patch should be strong and as thick as possible. Don't use anything that you find at home, because probably those clothes were washed a million times and they will tear easily. So go to your local store and choose a material that fits your needs. First it will look strange when you are walking into the store and checking all the material with calipers, but uh, even if they will think that you're completely stupid, they will get used to it, believe me. They do in my local store as well. Let's talk about the thickness of the material. You need as thick material as possible, because it will grab your bullet firmly, so you are going to have an accurate load, and second, it will seal the gases, because it is going to fill the grooves of the rifling. It is quite easy to determine the starting thickness for a patching material. You have to start with slugging your bore, which means that you will have to hammer, gently hammer, halfway, a slightly oversized lead slug into your muzzle. Pull it out and measure the largest caliber that you can measure on it. This is going to be your groove to groove diameter. Now, from this groove to groove diameter, deduct the exact diameter of your bullet. So, for example, for a 45 caliber percussion muzzle loading rifle, usually the groove diameter is around 460. So, here is an example. The mathematics are simple. Deduct 0 0.445 from 0 0.46 and you arrive to 0 0.015. Now divide this by 2 and you arrive to your patch thickness. This is your starting point. According to my experience, this is a good starting patch. So if, for example, if you're a hunter, this will give you an easy loading. But if you are looking for extreme accuracy, like we are looking for when we are going to World Championships or European Championships, we usually go above this. So add 20% more and then you will arrive to the desired target shooting patch. The next question is how to determine if your patch is working properly or not. Well, first, if your rifle is accurate, then you're doing it right. If you can shoot that rifle whole day without extensive cleaning of the bore, then you're doing it right. Keep doing that. If there's a problem, then collect your patches in front of the shooting stand and start reading them. If there is a bullet size hole in the center of the patch, then you shot through your patch. This means that the material is very bad. You have to change it. You have to change it for sure. If there are just little holes all around the bullet where it touched the patch, then the rifling just cut your patches, which means that your patch is too thick or your bullet is too large diameter. But usually it's much easier to change the patch thickness than the diameter of the ball. So in this case, just step down one level with the thickness of the patch. When everything is working as it has to, then you will see a patch that is not thorn, that is not punctured, the sides can be a bit torn, but we don't care about it because that's not the part where we are sealing the gases. But you will see the imprint of the rifling on the patch, on brown, and you will see the imprint of the bullet also in the, in the patch. If you see a complete circle, that means a complete seal, and that's what we are looking for. Let's talk about the powder charge. Did I tell you that patch round bull rifles and pistols are very forgiving? Meaning that they don't care about the quality, the grain size of the powder. They will actually work with anything. You can buy the cheapest powder and I'm pretty sure that you're going to find a decent accuracy with those powders as well. Because the loop patch is cleaning your bore after each shot, so we don't care if the powder is dirty. If you're a target shooter, it is a good question. What should be your starting load? There are formulas on the internet that you can use, but I really have to say that they don't work in 100%. Uh, but there is actually a very simple formula that I use usually when I'm starting with a new rifle or new pistol that actually drops the numbers that are very close to the most accurate load of that rifle. It takes into, the, into account the twist rate of the bore as well, which is very important because the slower your twist rate is, the faster your bullet has to be for a good stabilization. So this formula is the following. Let's make an example. I have a 45 caliber Kentucky pistol with a twist rate of 119 inches, which means I'm going to multiply 0 0.45 by 19 and again by 2 and we are going to arrive to 17.1 grains of powder. And ladies and gentlemen, this 17.1 grains of powder is very close to the one that from Swiss 3F powder will work well in this Kentucky pistol. So you can easily start with this charge and start reducing it with one grain or two grains increments or decrements and soon you will arrive to the desired accuracy. When you are shooting for accuracy and you are developing your load and trying your loads, then always shoot from the rest. 
because you want to minimize the human error. Always shoot at least five shots, deduct one, and measure the four best shots. This one is deducted because of the human errors. So this four will give you the group. For 25 meter shooting with a pistol, go for at least three, four centimeter groups. So which means that one or one and a half inch of a group will work well if you are a target shooter. For rifle, this is the same, but for 50 meters. So for pistols, always try the pistol at 25 meters or 25 yards and with rifles always to 50 meters or if it's a prone discipline then go for 100 meters immediately. Let's talk about the lubrication. Lubrication is necessary. If you don't lube your patches then you are not going to be able to charge the fourth, fifth shots into your bore. It will stuck somewhere in the middle and if it's stuck then don't fire it. It's very important. If you cannot push that firmly down on the top of the powdered column then don't fire it because you can harm your gun, you can damage your gun, and in extreme circumstances you can damage yourself as well, injure yourself or the shooter beside you. The lubrication also helps the patch to seal the gases better, because it is not just the patch that seals the gases, but also the lube itself. What kind of lubes you can you use? Pure tallow is the simplest. You can use it, but in hot weather it is better to add a bit of beeswax. One part of beeswax or two parts of beeswax against nine parts of tallow or eight parts of tallow. That should be a very, very good lubrication that will keep you keep your rifle shooting all day. There are also some shooters who are using a material called patch milk. This is a fluid. This is a fluid that is mixed from 50% water and 50% uh, drilling oil. This is also very good. One problem with this is that it is messy. It's much more messy and it is evaporating from your patches, meaning that if you're a hunter, then use the tallow beeswax loop because it is going to get stuck into the, into the, uh, the fibers of the, of, the, of the patching material. Well, this mixture, this tallow and beeswax mixture, is easy, easy, very easy to apply to your patches. Melt it together and just dip lube your patches into this mixture. After you dip them, just put them into a piece of handkerchief and push the excess material out of the patches. The, 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 the fine amount of lubrication that remains on the patch or in the fibers is more than enough for your rifle or pistol. The spit patch is also a good solution and your spit is something that you don't actually leave at home. So you cannot forget it. And it works, ladies and gentlemen. It's a bit disgusting, but I use this for target shooting with my Swiss match rifle and with my Mortimer rifle as well for 100 meter shooting. And I really have to say that the rifle is accurate. Let's talk about the importance of the loading procedure, where your accuracy depends on one third on the accuracy of the rifle and the charge, one third on your shooting skills and one third on your loading procedure and the rest 1% is luck. Well, your loading procedure is very, very important because from shot by shot, you have to do everything exactly the same. So first of all, I weigh all my bullets and keep only those that are within plus minus one grains of a weight deviation. I weigh my powder charge by volume, but I, if it's an important competition, not for a domestic competition or fun shooting, but if it's an important competition, I double check it on a digital scale. I charge my powder through a long funnel. This will help the powder to settle evenly in the breech of the rifle. In most cases, I will charge some semolina on top of the powder charge. This is half the volume of the powder charge. This is important because it is going to equalize the gas pressure. The lowest powder charge I use, the more important the semolina is. On top of the semolina, I push the bullet always with the same force. This is very, very important. So you don't crush the powder, you don't hammer the bullet down, but you push gently bullet on top of the powder charge with equal force from shot to shot. It is advisable that when you have the proper charge for your rifle or your pistol, you mark the ramrod at exactly that level where it has to stand out when the full charge is pushed down into the breech. So now you can be always sure that it's in the same level. It's, it has the same compression. A clean bore is always an accurate bore. So after each shot, if it's a delicate rifle like the Pedersen Smith rifle and it's an important competition, I always wipe the bore with a wet patch. So if you follow these steps, you will surely find your accurate load for your patch round ball pistol or patch round ball rifle. The patch round ball can be a good hunting projectile for short range, or it can be a good target shooting projectile for up to 150 meters. Unfortunately, its ballistic coefficient is really, really bad, so it is losing energy and velocity very fast. So that's how simple it is, ladies and gentlemen. So please share, comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. If you have a question, then please ask it in the pinned comment. Please visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash capandball, and if you can, and if you wish, please support us. 
Until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.